cocktail has an umbrella, you know it's gonna be a good time. <laughs> Today we're in the test kitchen making our favorite cocktails. You don't really need a ton of ingredients to make a really great cocktail. It can be as simple as a spirit and a citrus, or as fancy and fun as like something blended in a coconut. Pick a fruit, pick an herb. You will be able to find something you love, and that is why cocktails are so great. Yeah, I can drink about 25 of these. I'm pretty much drinking cocktails everywhere I go. One of my favorite cocktails is the Pisco Sour. A Pisco is essentially just a distilled wine. Few ingredients, nothing too fancy. Egg whites, it adds this foamed, aerated, silky texture to a cocktail. We have lime juice, simple syrup, the Pisco itself, and we also have the Angostura bitters. Where the lime juice and the sort of acidity that you get from the cocktail might be like really biting on your tongue, egg white kind of brings that down. Oh my God, and we're serving our drink in a little young coconut. Basically want to create a nice opening that feels comfortable to drink. What I like to do is make two sort of pilot holes. That'll help for the water to drain properly. If you have tools handy, you can use a drill if you want to and really get in there. You typically wouldn't drink the water of a uh, brown coconut. Sometimes you'll open it up, it feels like a little like fermented or vinegary. But for younger ones, it's totally a-okay. So now the coconut is open. I'm gonna fill with ice, add all of my ingredients. Got my egg whites. Big fan of egg whites. It's gonna make it nice and frothy and creamy. We have two ounces of our lime juice. We're gonna use one and a half ounces of our simple syrup. And then we're going to add four ounces of our pisco to the shaker as well. My lid goes on. So I'm gonna shake. You're gonna feel the temperature of your shaker change. That's how you know the ice is working. It's doing its job. And so into the young coconut. You can already kind of see the foam is sort of working its way to the top. So that's cool too. Like the airy part kind of floats to the top. Then you have this really beautiful sort of cloud of foam on the top of your cocktail. And now what we're gonna do is take our Angostura. And I'm just gonna do a little boop through so you get like a nice leaf pattern and then you have a Pisco Sour. You took very little ingredients and made something that feels like really fun and cool for the summer. It's super simple. Wow. This is taking me to me and uh, Lindsay Lohan and Mykonos. And we're dancing, we're doing all the choreography together. I'm actually just watching her. I'm like sitting in my pool chair and I'm like, you go girl. Mm. <laughs> I don't drink, so today I'm gonna to be making a honey berry kombucha spritzer using some blackberries, herbs, a little bit of honey, and some kombucha to give us a really nice complex flavor. For me, a really good mocktail is like a little bit herbaceous, a little bit fruity, um, and it's definitely carbonated. This would be like ideal if I was like hanging out by the pool, um, like in August when it's like swelteringly hot. Um, this would be perfect because it's super refreshing. Kombucha adds a lot to cocktails. It's really nice and tart. It's bubbly, so tangy, and there's so much happening that you can't really get from anything else. Um, lemon juice or lime juice alone won't give you that like fermented sour quality that kombucha has. I'm gonna grab a glass um, and I'm gonna add about like an ounce of blackberries. So that's like five to eight blackberries. I just love blackberries. So I thought they'd be super delicious, but obviously go for whatever fruit you're into. And then I'm gonna go in with like Maybe the mint leaves from two sprigs, that feels like enough. Basil would also be really nice, like summer basil is like particularly sweet. If you like that licorice -y flavor, Thai basil would be super nice too. And then I'm gonna go in with honey. I don't like things too sweet, but the kombucha is pretty sour. So a good like two teaspoons is plenty for me, but if you wanna keep things more sour, go with one. I also like to add like a little pinch of salt. That's gonna help draw out some of the moisture from the berries so we get like a syrupy situation. So I'm just gonna muddle this together until like the blackberries are really syrupy and jammy. Already you can smell like the oils from the mint. It smells super herbaceous and earthy. It's really nice. And then because I don't wanna get rid of all the carbonation, I'm just gonna stir it in and pour it down the spine of this. You want like eight ounces. 
When you pour the kombucha down the spine, you sort of maintain the carbonation. We don't want to like kill it just because I want to combine the flavors. I'm just going to stir it together really gently. The benefit to shaking is to aerate and dilute, but since there's no like hard alcohol in here, we don't need to dilute anything. And because kombucha is carbonated, we don't really need to aerate either. So stirring is just easier and makes more sense. I'm going to put some ice in this glass and I'm just going to strain it through. I don't mind the blackberry bits, like the seeds add a really nice texture, but the mint leaves, I don't want to get into the final drink. Garnish with a little bit of fresh mint. Cute. It smells so good and the color is so beautiful. The blackberries give it this like deep like, berry hue. Mm, super good. The kombucha is really tart and so you're getting that like acidic quality and sourness and then the berries gave it a little bit of flavor and sweetness and then the mint just sort of like lands everything. It's really gorgeous. Whether or not you drink alcohol, I think you can still have a lot of fun with drinks. I really love how creative you can get. This one um, hits all the right notes for me um, and yeah, it's super delicious. Margaritas for me are an incredible kind of refreshing cocktail to drink. I feel like anything with tequila is going to be a great day. This one for me is even more special because of the pog in it. This is pog. I drank this growing up, so there's definitely a lot of nostalgia with this, but it's passion fruit, orange and guava nectar in a can. It makes the perfect vessel for a summer cocktail. Um, and then this special bag, it's called Lee Hing Moi Powder. If you ever had uh, tamarind candies growing up where it's like very sour, very acidic, and then a little bit salty outside, this is what you would find in powdered form. I don't want to have a bunch of like mint leaves all smashed in my glass. So I made a mint simple syrup, super easy to make. It's one part sugar to one part water and just let your mint steep in it. Cut a little bit of lime and we're gonna rim our glass on the top so that we can put a little bit of Lee Hing powder on the rim. The best way to rim your glass is to put it on a plate and then you can just kind of turn. The type of glass that we're using today is a hurricane glass. This is gonna be a really bright, beautiful cocktail. Um, you get to see everything in it. We're gonna add some lime juice for a little bit of brightness. I'm gonna add mint simple syrup. And then for the spirit, we're gonna add tequila. I think the best running joke at our restaurant is, do you really know Mel if you haven't had tequila with Mel? So here it is. <laughs> we're choosing a silver tequila. This one gets accentuated by the things that you're using with it. Adding an ounce and a half of tequila and then the same amount of pog. All right, and then I'm just gonna add some ice cubes. And then we're gonna shake it. Um, the reason why we're shaking this cocktail is because we wanna make sure that all of the flavors of the tequila, the pog, the lime, get equally distributed through. If I was gonna make a stirred cocktail, it's more to keep the integrity of the spirit um, without having the water dilute it. Oh, the perfect amount. Don't forget your umbrella. There is your summer pagarita. <laughs> oh my God. I can probably drink like five of these. <laughs> it's not too sweet at all. Um, the mint syrup comes out, but it isn't overpowering either. I might be here in the test kitchen, but this feels like I'm on a beach in the Philippines somewhere. I'm a big tequila mezcal guy in the past uh, three years or so. A lot of them tend to have smoky notes to it, but then also kind of like a vegetal uh, that I can't quite put a finger on. It's like a little riff on a ranch water, which is a tequila or a mezcal uh, mixed with seltzer. We're gonna jazz it up a little bit with some aromatics and uh, that's it. It's my drink, it's what I'm drinking, all right? And it's gonna start with a little bit of ginger, all right? So I'll take like a little disc, you know? What would we say that is? Half inch thick, depending on what side it is three-eighths, a chubby three-eighths, and we'll put that right in there. Same thing with the old lemongrass. Nice little primo section. Oh, that's good. I'm gonna put that right in there, nice. We'll put a little tarragon for muddleage too. And we'll do a little bit of mint in there for the muddleage, okay? I'm a juice of one lime guy. I like it a lot of citrus in there. So I do the juice of one lime per serving. Muddle that up, crush that ginger, not too much. I don't want it to be like 
filled with all different particles, but I just want to bruise it up, open it up, let those aromatics and oils be released. Oh, and then we'll give it a good old Sandra Lee pour. Just an ounce or two. Glug, 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 glug. That's good. Now we just need a little ice and a little salty. Crushed ice. It's a nice little experience. It gets away from like this big clunky cube to more just like, oh, we're, this is like almost a freaking dessert. But uh, yeah, it's just a really refreshing, easy drinking. We're gonna give it a little effervescence here. Top her right off, because I put like four ounces of mezcal in there. Look at that, that looks nice, huh? You put a little straw in there if you want. Got a little herby, a little lemongrass, a little ginger. You know, it's not like you're sitting there and marvel at this thing, you wanna go taking pictures of it or anything, but I tell you what, it's gonna do you real nice, real nice. Ooh, 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 that's nice. Elevated little uh, herby, gingery, minty, uh, lemongrass ranch water, mezcal ranch water. So cocktails, I mean, what's great about them I and just like cooking is that you can bring it home. You can riff around on something that you were inspired by at a restaurant. And before you know it, you got your own little dialed in personal cocktail, like my spa ready ranch water. We're calling this the grapefruit refresher angled towards summer drinking specifically. I like fruity, I like sparkly, I like fun. So today I'm making a non-alcoholic drink, which I think it's important to have those in your arsenal, especially if you're having people over who don't drink or if you're like, just like taking it easy. We've got this like acidic, sweet, but bitter grapefruit juice. You've got the bright lime. I think the key for making a drink like this, you want like a pretty punchy, flavorful base. And then you've got the secret ingredient, which is preserved lemon paste. It's extremely salty. Preserved lemons are lemons that are cured in salt. Just like salt brightens up every ingredient when you're cooking, it'll brighten up all of the components, sort of make them shine, and also like trick your palate into wanting more and feeling like it's quenching your thirst. The other thing that's fun about this drink, and I think summer drinks in general should air this direction, is that it's batchable. We mix everything that isn't the soda in a pitcher, and then one by one, you just pour that over ice, add some soda and add your garnishes and go. So that can be made and batched well in advance. If you were to add mezcal or something to this, that can be a part of what goes in the pitcher. The basic ratios are one and a half cups of grapefruit juice, a couple tablespoons of lime juice, and about a half teaspoon of preserved lemon puree. Grapefruit juice is really great here because of those like bitter undertones. It's sweet, it's got the citrusy vibes. We'll make like a double-ish batch, maybe more. I just don't want it to look meager in the pitcher, you know what I'm saying? Citrus always goes really well together. And I think the lime, which is like very bright and acidic and the grapefruit, which is like a little bit more mellow, I think balance each other out really nicely. And then we're gonna do just a little bit of preserved lemon puree. It's very salty. It's bright, lemony, salty, really good. A little bit is gonna go a long way. A lot of times people will put a pinch of salt in their cocktails, but this is kind of doing the double duty of the lemon and the salt. So we'll stir that up. And this is when you'd add your spirit if you wanted to do that. Yum, delightful. Okay, now we're gonna prep some garnishes just to be cute. A little lime wheel. And then I'm gonna do a little grapefruit. I want really thin here because I'm going to line the inside of my glass with it. Ice is very important, I mean, when a cocktail bar has a good ice game, you know that they have a good everything game because it means that they're paying attention to the details. I'm gonna fill it about halfway and then top, top with soda, the like cleanness of sparkling water and violent bubbles almost hurts you so sparkly. Um, I think that goes really well with these kinds of things. And that is your grapefruit refresher. It feels very summery in a very good way. Oh, the little saltiness is so delightful. It takes like very few ingredients, many that you probably already have and only one that you might have to seek out. I just think this is a really nice thing to be able to whip up in the summer when you want something a little more special, um, but not boozy. Why is it called a ranch water? I don't know, man, that's what they call it down Texas and Mexico. You know, like a spa water, but you know, down in Texas, we don't have spas, we've got ranches. So I think that's, that's why. That's my guess, you might wanna fact check that.